How's it going, Biathlon fans? It's that time of year again. It's time for the Summer Biathlon Roller Ski Championships in Ozerbli, Slovakia. Enough of these gala races, these, you know, expo races like the, the Blink Festival and the City Biathlon. It's time for real biathlon racing, and we're going to start off here with the Super Sprint. Now, all these athletes did a qualifier earlier this morning when I was asleep. They did a 3K qualifier to make this event, and here we go. We got the Super Sprint. 7.5K four shooting stages, so it's gonna be a quick race. One and a half K loops, and as you could see by some of the uh, the headshots that we had here, we got some big names in the crowd. We got, obviously, Marketa Davidova, bib number three from the Czech Republic, but Tuli Tomingas and Susan Plume from Estonia won the qualifier. They're going bibs one and two. That is really exciting. You know, Estonia, you don't expect to see them up there. Uh, we got Johanna Skotheim from Sweden in the crowd. Uh, all of the, uh, the top German names, uh, whoever's left on the German team, after uh, Denise Herman Vick retired. Um, let's see, who else do we have in the crowd here? It looks like that is uh, most of the big names. I don't see any, aside from uh, Marketa Davidova, uh, I don't really see any of the other big names from the World Cup this season. Mo Mona Brorsen from Sweden, she's there. So this morning, all the athletes did a 4.5K qualifier with two shootings. They're still using the exact same 1.5K loop. And then of the top 30 athletes that qualify, they all move on to this mass start here, which is again, the same one and a half K loop, but now it's four shooting stages, seven and a half K. They do this event on the IBU Cup all the time, and I really hope that someday they will do it on the World Cup, because this is such a fast and exciting event. Um, we did something like this in the US a couple years ago. Of course, we didn't even have 30 people, so we didn't even do the qualifier, but it was really fun, really exciting, and, and I think it's a, it's a totally different event. I mean, in biathlon, a biathlon's an endurance sport, right? But uh, this event is very much a sprint event because, I mean, 7.5K, that's, uh, that's definitely the women's sprint uh, field. But you're doing so many shooting stages in between that, uh, you know, you're, you barely, barely have any time to actually race. I mean, you're, the second you leave the range, you're back in the range to shoot again. And there's also so much pressure on the shooting, not pressure, but emphasis on the shooting where uh, if you have a miss, uh, you can really mess up your, your race, even though it's a, a 75 meter penalty loop. Um, you know, it's, I don't know, it just, it just brings what we love about biathlon, the pressure, the excitement, the speed, and it just compacts it all into this really small event. So I hope that the IBU brings this up to the World Cup more regularly. I think it would be really cool to see uh, on the World Cup because I think it also is one of those events that gives some smaller nations an advantage. I mean, um, you know, the longer the events go, I think the more that you're going to see the, the Norwegians, the Swedes, the French just pull away. Uh, and with these shorter events, as you can see in the qualifier, we got two Estonians in the front. And they beat Marketa Davidova, who is a favorite on the World Cup. So it just goes to show you that uh, the shorter the events go, the more craziness can happen. Um, and yeah, the more exciting it is. Here we go as we enter shooting number one. It's in the prone. We're going prone, prone, standing, standing, no spare rounds. So that's the big thing. I think when they first introduced this event, everyone got one spare round per per shooting bout, but I think they eliminated that very quickly. Um, it just makes for more exciting biathlon. <laughs> uh, all right, way up at the top, German Weissnartner. She, Weiss, Weissnartner takes the first shot quickly, but she misses. Shavadova way at the top is clean. Wow, really quick shooting. Down at the bottom again, we got Davidova's clean, Klum is clean, Tomingos with a miss, and uh, looks like we got a lot of other misses throughout the field. Um, so let's see who comes out first. The first shooting stage is always just a crapshoot. Who knows who's gonna leave the range first? And it's gonna be, ooh, Galenko from Madova. Ma Madova? I didn't even see her on the shooting line, but there she is. She's in first place, followed by Klum, Davidova, Shavadova, Jislova. There go all the Czech girls. All right, as these ladies make their way around the course, we still, we got Lucy Shavadova and uh, Marketa Davidova in first. The two Czech ladies are leading this race, but we got uh, Alea Galenko uh, from Moldova in third place. So I figured we'd pull her up, take a look at her stats. She's 31 years old. And as you can see, she had a really good shooting year, a really good breakout year in uh, the 2021 season. Uh, where she got a couple, um, a couple good races on the World Cup, uh, but her best performance is in the 40s. 
uh, or the, the 30s, and then she quickly went back down, and, and in general, she's been kind of floating around, ooh, that 80 mark, that's not even above the, uh, the pursuit mark of 60, so um, no offense, but just statistically speaking, I don't expect to see her around for uh, much more of the competition. Uh, her shooting is definitely where she shines in the prone. Um, well, she was 90% back in 2021, but this past season she fell to 78, which is well below uh, what you need to be doing on the World Cup. So, um, hey, let's go. Let's. I mean, we're cheering for uh, we're cheering for a Galenko here because I mean, I'd love to see more variety at the top of the field. So, uh, maybe if this is the breakout that she needs to get the confidence to be on the you know a, a regular a competitor on the World Cup. Let's do it. Here we go into shooting at number two. We got the two Czech ladies up front. That is Davidova and Sharvotova. Sharvotova. Uh, Tomingas is still in there, uh, but there's just Lova. Wow, like almost the whole Czech team is in there. Um, when is the Czech team gonna step up? I mean, Davidova obviously is a, uh, she's the front runner on the team, but when are we gonna get that two, three, four? Like when is the Czech relay team gonna be like the Swedish relay team where it's, hey, that anything can happen. Uh, let's see. The Czech girls are all having a hard time on the range right now. Jislova misses her last one, but Tuli Tomingas is clean. So is Klum. So there, the two uh, Estonian girls are going to go back in the front. Oh my gosh, here we go. The Polish names, uh, Sidrochik uh, and Jankiela, Jankiela are going to be uh, following them. Uh, I know I'm pronouncing these wrong, so if you have the correct pronunciation, leave them in the comments down below. Um, but uh, Julia Zima from the Ukraine is there. Good to see her uh, moving her way towards the front of the field with that clean shooting. Lisa Spark from Germany. That's an upcoming name that if you're a true biathlon fan and you want to get ahead of the curve with you know who's coming up next, the, look at the German juniors right now, just saying. Um, but here we go, Kuli Tomingas from Estonia. She is going to be your leader after shooting number two as they are done with the prone stages now. And, uh, you know, let's see. Let's take a look at Tomingas' stats to see if she's going to take this lead uh, all the way home. All right, out on course, we got Tuli Tomingas out here. And uh, in general, she's been steadily climbing. And honestly, this is what I'd love to see from... Uh, someone like Renny Zakna, uh, like she broke onto the World Cup back in 2014 and you know had had young senior results you know she was kind of on that cusp of being in the in or out of the podium had a really good 2019 season and just kind of steadily you know you see the ups and downs but then just slowly but surely she's getting more impressive more um, more consistent really that's what you're going for and then in uh, this year world championships in the individual she came in six and I remember this was a huge thing for the Estonian Biathlon Federation because uh, You know who expected them to be uh, in the top in the flowers at world championships? Uh, where does it come from though? I mean her shooting has been steadily steadily improving uh, over the years She's still below that World Cup standard at 82% you want to see that like at least 85% maybe north of that um, But it really came from an improvement in her standing last season her standing was 75% this year it's 80%. So, I mean, statistically speaking, expect Tuli to have a miss in this next stage. She already has one miss in the prone. She's nine for 10 in prone. Expect, I mean, based on this, expect two misses in the standing. But, uh, you know, her prone took a dive this year. Last year, her prone was up near 90%. This year, dove down to like 86%. So, um, Really, it's her skiing. Really, it's her skiing that took an improvement in each year over year. It's been improving ever so slightly to the point where now, compared to the average skier, she's actually on the negative side of zero, which means she's skiing faster than the average skier on the World Cup, which is really good. That's where you want to be. Obviously, you want to be faster. Fast skiers win biathlon races. Don't quote me. But uh, yeah, I mean, compared to the top 10, yeah, she's still a little bit behind, but compared to the average skier, she's, she's on the right side of zero. If she can continue improving that, maybe just maybe let's see how she did this year on average she was kind of placing around 30th place on the World Cup overall she finished 46 maybe just maybe she can break the top 30 this year that'd be really exciting all right here comes Tomingas into shooting at number three we're in the stand position now and uh, we're a little bit more than halfway through. She's got bib number one, that's always good, whether it's summer world champs, winter world champs, doesn't matter, you're a world champ, you got bib number one, that's that's a good uh, a good feeling. Love the little mascots they got there, that's becoming a, a regular thing. So, here we go, as she misses her second shot, oh, there's two, come on, stay with it, stay with it. Oh, okay, okay, I thought she missed the last one. All right, hey, I said she was gonna miss two, I didn't think she was gonna miss two in one stage, I thought, you know, maybe one, one or something, but, uh, 
hey, that's uh, that's by fun. That's what happens. But she's got to rip through though. She's got a little bit of a lead as the competitors and her challengers are coming to the range. Um, I bet she's going to get through the penalty loop. It's only 75 meters. Klum already has a miss. Uh, the Polish girls ha both have a miss. Is anyone? Oh, we got Weiss Schnartner. Weiss. Weissen Schartner. <laughs> I know there's a lot of Germans that watch this. I want to pronounce it correctly. Marion is her first name. Marion's clean. Lisa Spark is also clean. So here come the Germans. Everyone else has a miss. Everyone else is going to the penalty loop. There goes Tamingas back out on the course. She's still in the lead. Oh, Blaschko missed her last shot. And there goes Marion. Uh, Weissen Schartner. Weissen Schartner. Marion. There goes Marion. <laughs> And Lisa Spark is going to round out the podium, but Klum is still in there, and so is Jankila from Poland. Okay, according to Google Translate, it's pronounced Wiesen Sarter. Wiesen Sarter. Wiesen Sarter. It means meadow, meadow warbler. I don't even know what warbler is. <laughs> okay, anyway, Marion Wiesen Sarter. She uh, doesn't have too many uh, races on the World Cup. She's uh, relatively new to the scene. She's 28 years old, but that is just a testament to how strong the German team is. Um, but she's got quite a bit of experience on the IBU Cup, I believe. But real quick, just looking at her World Cup rank, I mean, let's see, in the World Cup in 2021, she came in 11th place and then you just get immediately sent back down. That's that's crazy. You're almost breaking the top 10, you get sent back down. Um, she did not have any experience on the World Cup this season, so let's take a look at her IBU results. Now, um, here's the thing. Denise Herman Vick retired. Um, some of the other favorites, like Preuss, retired. So now the, you know, the door is open for some of these young athletes. But, like I said earlier, Germany has some awesome juniors coming through the pipeline. I'm talking Lisa Spark. Um, there's another one in there, Groten, Selena Groten. Oh, she's going to be the next Laura Dahlheimer, calling it now. Um, but let's see, where is Marion uh, Wiesen Sartner on the IBU Cup? She took a little bit of a dive this year. Last year, she was probably fighting for the IBU Cup score. I mean, she had a lot of top tens towards the end of the season. Uh, but this year, she did take a little bit of a dive. Where did that come from? Um, it didn't really come from her shooting or her skiing. I wonder what happened there. Um, hmm, interesting. Well, anyway, uh, she took a little bit of a dive this year. I mean, she's still like that top 20 person. I mean, she's German. What do you expect? You expect nothing but greatness in Germany in biathlon. So, um, you know, maybe this is her year. Hey, with, I don't know how the German system works. Maybe a good result at the World Championships here today. And uh, maybe that could give her uh, a start spot on the World Cup to start the season. Um, but, you know, who knows? It's, it is roller skiing. It doesn't really matter much. Um, she's just a very strong athlete, though. I mean, there she comes skiing through the range right there. Just very, very strong strong um, and uh, she's she's on the hunt right now and <laughs> it's actually funny you can't get two different we're gonna see on the range here in a second you can't get two different body types Tuli Taminga is a very tall athlete and uh, Marion's a very smaller uh, sh stronger athlete so um, it just goes to show you there's not one bi body type that uh, equals success in biathlon you just gotta take what you have and you gotta be the best you can possibly be and we're gonna see it right here on the range when they stand next to each other all right, here we go. Into shooting number four. For all the marbles, we got Tuli Tamingas from Estonia and Marion Wiesensarter from Germany. They're gonna go head to head. We got some chasers. Looks like we got Jankla from Poland and uh, Lisa Spark from Germany as well. Tamingas puts the pressure on with three, four, and oh, she missed the last shot. It's up to Marion to clean. And she does it! Marion Wiesenstarter is going to take the lead. And Lisa Spark, can we get two Germans on the podium? Yes, we can. There's going to be two Germans fighting. Jankila. Oh, Jankila missed! Oh, no. So there we go. We got Marion is going to take the lead. Come on, where's Tamingas? Get out of the penalty loop. Oh, it's going to be a fight for second place between Lisa Spark and Tule Tamingas. And no one else is going to challenge because Jankila is going into the penalty loop. So here's your race. One and a half K for second place and these two athletes are separated by less than a second and quite honestly they're not too far if, if uh, Marion were to fall or crash or something they're gonna be right there so let's see what happens here all right here we go there's Marion she's still in the lead I love that tempo oh so aggressive man I, you can just tell like when there's an athlete who's like a competitor 
there's just such a difference between an athlete who's like either I'm fit or God forbid worse you're not fit you're just you know existing <laughs> but uh, now look at this competitor like high tempo high power this is what I want to see and even that last little push into the downhill did you see that she pushed through the top of the hill and then there was one little extra free skate and then she doesn't just tuck she doesn't just recover she free skates all the way man I was looking up stats for Lisa Spark but now I'm just totally blown away by Marion Wiesen Sartner's uh, last lap here she's just pulling away from Tamingas who's really just giving it to Lisa Spark so it looks like that is gonna be the podium uh, even Spark you know she's 23 years old she only has one World Cup performance a couple IBU Cup performances this year with a win on the IBU Cup at the uh, summer world champs or sorry the winter uh, European Championship individual but uh, there you go that is uh, that's aggressive and uh, tactile and <laughs> that's just biathlon at its finest I love it um, I don't know who that coach is oh is she going to the finish okay I was really concerned there for a second I thought she was going down the lap lane um, but there you go Marion uh, Vason Sartner as the uh, Google Translate is telling me it's pronounced you know let me know down below um, she's gonna be your super sprint champion really good for her hopefully hopefully she can you know someone from the German team can break through and, and take that void now from um, from Denise Herman Vick retiring but hey good race for Tuli Tomingas I mean hey top 10 at world champs it's like what's gonna happen this season uh, and there you go she starts it off with a, uh, a podium at the summer world champs and great for Lisa Spark She's got one race. Look at that. They're so happy for each other because A, they're teammates, but B, like Lisa Spark, 23 years old, um, just not a lot of experience on the World Cup at this point, and then coming in here and claiming a podium spot at Summer Worlds. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, hey everyone, if you want to watch the whole race in its entirety without my commentary, check the link in the description down below. As always, whenever I do a race reaction, I always link to the full race, so if you want to watch it there without my commentary, by all means, go do that. And hey, if you're a biathlon fan and you want more biathlon content, check out the Summer Challenge series that I just finished producing, episode number three. First two episodes are live already. Go check them out if you're a biathlon fan, because I basically spent the summer with some of the most competitive juniors in the U.S. biathlon system, and thanks to Solomon, they donated a bunch of prizes for them to compete for and it's just good clean biathlon fun here's a quick clip of one of those competitions oh no all right now on to the men's race all right, here we go for the men's race at the Summer Biathlon World Championships in Ozerbly. Uh, we got Renny Zakna. He is from Estonia. He won the Super Sprint Qualifier. So um, this is going to be a pretty exciting race here. Looks like we got a lot of big names. Uh, Zakna, Talenchko, uh, Jasper Nalin is there. I don't see Sebastian Samuelson anywhere on the list. So maybe he didn't race. Maybe he's not there. Maybe he didn't qualify. That'd be a bummer if not. Alexander Mukin from Kazakhstan came in fourth. Kazakhstan, I was there at the summer, or not the summer, the biathlon winter. I was there at the Winter Junior World Championships uh, this this season, and it was uh, quite an interesting venue, quite an interesting location, but Mookin actually had a great event in Lake Placid at the World University Games, which uh, weren't really an IBU event, but uh, I saw Mookin race with my own two eyes there, and he's a pretty strong athlete, a pretty uh, pretty go-getter type athlete, if, I, if I've seen one, but uh, Amelia Cloud is there, Femling is there, and then we got the Czech team. So this is definitely going to be a really uh, a fun and interesting race here. Uh, even Rastiguyas is there, and he, I thought he was going to be done racing, but um, we got Andreas Rastiguyas from, uh, from Latvia. All right, as we enter shooting number one, it looks like we got uh, Mikishka from uh, the Czech Republic in first. Now, a lot of people have been leaving comments in a lot of my videos who are Czech fans talking about how there's a young crop of Czech athletes coming up the system right now that are going to be doing uh, very well in the near future. So maybe this is one of them. Um, it would be great to see the Czech team turn around. I mean, I feel like after Schlesinger and, uh, you know, some of their other big names retired, the team has sort of fell a little bit flat. Like they haven't had, they've had Krishmar who's been able to kind of lead the pace, but he hasn't been able to to like be that standout guy that they had with uh, some of the other guys. So 
hopefully we can get a new crop of Czech athletes. Because I mean, biathlon's so big in the Czech Republic and, and the women's team is sort of on the rise. I mean, they're still kind of having trouble breaking into that top five as well. But um, it would be so good to see the Czech biathlon team, both men and women, suddenly just have a breakthrough in performance and become like one of those top five performers. All right, so here we go, shooting number one. Let's see what is going to happen. Looks like Renny Zachna is going with the orange rifle this year. I'm kind of liking that. That's a pretty cool choice. I haven't seen too many orange rifles on the World Cup circuit. And Makishka, who I'm totally pronouncing his name wrong. Leave it. I have no idea how to pronounce any of the Eastern European names, so that's on me. Zachna is clean. Makishka is clean. Rastaguvia is, is clean. Strolia is clean. And we got a couple, a uh, couple misses out there. Um, no spare rounds in this event. You're going straight to the 75 meter pellet to loop, not 150 meter. But we got uh, Makiska is out in front. Zachna is right there. And Hornig, look at that. Two Czech guys right in first and first and third right now. Obviously, plenty of race to go. But uh, two Czech guys are out there, followed by actually some Ukrainians. So there we go. Good, uh, good first stage there for uh, Eastern Europe. All right, so we got Rennie Zachna here in second place. And the question I have is, when is Rennie gonna become like a top uh, 20 contender more regularly? I remember when I was a junior, Rennie was one of the guys to beat, along with Sean Doherty, uh, Fabian Cloud. Uh, these guys, those those three were like kind of head and shoulders above the rest. And obviously Cloud is having a great uh, time. Yeah, I'm Fabian. The Cloud is having a great time in the World Cup right now. Sean is still finding his way, but uh, Zenny, Rennie is at the same time, he's he's kind of uh, flattened out and we're looking at his performance on Real Biathlon. His shooting percentage has been pretty stagnant ever since he's entered the World Cup and it's been all right. It's been like 80, floating back and forth between 84, 85%. Hopefully he can bump that up to, you know, maybe uh, 87 to 90%. That'll give him a big boost in the World Cup. And his ski speed has been, uh, it's been kind of fluttering. He had a good peak in 2018 and 2019. But he was, he's always been skiing a little bit slower than the average athlete. And you hope that maybe someday he can get on the right side of, or the negative side of zero to mean he's skiing faster than the average athlete. And hopefully if he can do that, we can see. I mean, he has had very slight improvement year over year. When he first broke onto the World Cup, he was shooting, he was in like the 70s. And then uh, now recently he's been kind of like performing in the 50s. So it means he's kind of on average hitting that, that, uh, He's hitting that pursuit, he's making that qualification, but uh, really a lot of that has come from his, his uh, skiing over the last couple years, has been improving. So if he can, if he can get a good uh, shooting season under his belt with his new and improved ski speed and rank, hopefully he can be more of like a top 30 guy. But uh, it would be great to see Estonia have just, you know, one, at least one just standout performer. Because, I mean, Estonia is such a small nation. It's uh, really, really great people. I was in Estonia this winter. And I'm going to be going back this, this winter for World Junior Worlds this year. Uh, Estonia, just great people. I would love for them to have a standout performer and someone to really build biathlon uh, in the nation. Here we go, shooting number two. Let's see who we got here. It looks like it is Makishka. And Makishka is still in the lead, and I know I'm pronouncing that wrong, so pre please help me out here. Strolia, another guy from uh, the Baltics who is having a great season. Lots of checks up there. There's Mukin back there. Makishka's clean. 10 for 10 in the prone. So is Zachna. Come on, Rennie, stay with him. This is really good for Rennie if he's going to be that standout guy that I was just talking about. Come on, let's see if anyone here. Where are the Germans? You guys are way back there. The Swedes as well. You guys are having some issues. Oscar Brandt has a miss. And, uh, and oh, Hornig. There we go. There's another Czech guy in the top. Ooh, Mukin. Three misses on that one. That's going to be a tough. So it looks like that's going to be our top three. We got Makishka, Zachna, and Hornig is coming out of the of the range right now. There he is. So there's going to be our top three. I don't see really anyone else in the back challenging. So I did look up Thomas's uh, World Cup stats and looks like he's actually had a pretty decent time on the World Cup. He's, he was he made his debut last year but he had uh, some more experience this past season and actually had a, a, a top 20 uh, at World Championships. Uh, two top 20s. One in the in the individual and then he had another top 20 in the mass start which is really cool for your second year on the world cup qualifying for the mass start is really impressive uh looks like he's a pretty uh pretty consistent athlete uh his ski speed is just about zero like again right where i said where Rennie zachna needs to be 
ski speed just about zero, and his shooting percentage went down a little bit this year, but still on the north side of 85. He's at 86 and a half percent. So this is like, this is actually a pretty equal matchup. If anything, I would say statistically, uh, Tomas has the advantage over Renny Zakna. Um, but let's see how they do in this short event. Remember, the Super Sprint is such a, a short, fast-paced event. Who knows how they're going to do against each other. So here they come into shooting, into this first standing shooting, right? Let's see if, yeah, you know, neither of them really have any, like, faults in their, their standing. It's not like one's really good at prone and really bad at standing. So um, this is going to be a pretty good matchup here. I really like to see what's going to happen here. A little bit of uh, left to right wind fluttering across the range. There you can see the competitors come in. Makishka strikes first. Oh, but he's got his first miss of the day, but he puts the pressure on Zachna, who has a miss as well. But they both have two misses. All right, Makishka's gone with two. And come on, Zachna, you guys stay with him. Oh, Renny has those last shot miss. So I think, I think, unless Strolia can shoot like super fast here, or Hornet can shoot super fast clean, I think that Tomas is gonna maintain his lead. Let's see if anyone else can do it. There's one from Strolia. Come on, two from Strolia. Three. Whoa, 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 Toshenko way up at the top from Ukraine. Out of nowhere, clean. So is Rastagulias is back into it. Oscar Brandt from Sweden is back into it. A lot of misses down in the lower part of the range. All right, here we go. Now we got a race. This is fun. This is the biathlon that we love. There goes Tomas. Okay, so I, like I said, he's still in the lead, but look at this. Here comes uh, Toshenko and Rastagulias now, and here's Oscar Brandt. So a huge shakeup in the first standing. I love that. That's what we love to see in biathlon. All right, as we enter the stadium for the final shooting stage, uh, looks like we got Rasaguya's uh, hot on Tomasz's tail. Uh, he's coming in, look at that, look at that pace. Number 12 there, that's Andreas Rasaguya's. Come on, Andreas Rasaguya's. This guy, I mean, I've been a fan of his, I was a fan of his, uh, you know, as a young athlete, I thought what he did, oh, there's Matt Emmons, a former US coach. Um, I thought what he did as, uh, a really independent athlete. His federation is so small. It was really impressive. Yeah, he had some issues with missing some uh, doping tests in the past. He never, he never tested negative. He never failed a doping test. He just didn't make the test. Uh, he had three strikes, three missed tests, and he got suspended for that. But uh, you know, we'll, we'll uh, do innocent till proven guilty here. Here we go into the last shooting stage. Tomash has three. Come on, four. Let's get out of there. Oh, <laughs> this is the last shot. He missed the last shot. Rastaguyas is clean. Rastaguyas is clean. Rastaguyas is going to take it to Shanko. Come on, man. Let's go. Clean. That's that's 20 for 20 for Tashenko. I, I can't even find his name on the on the on the data center here, and he's clean. He's 20 for 20, so that's gonna be a good result for him. Come on, Tomas, get back on there. He's led the race this whole time. You gotta get on the podium, man. Come on, this was your race. He's gonna be fighting with Tashenko for it, and both of them are about six seconds back of Andreas Rastaguyas. I think Rastaguyas has this one in the bag. No one's gonna catch him from there. All right, and we're, we're on the last lap here. I do want to make a correction. I could not find Tashenko in the data center for some reason, but I was able to find him on Real Biathlon, and the dude has been on the World Cup since 2014, so I apologize about that. That is my bad. Uh, his best event um, was way back in 2015 where he got a 10th on the World Cup. Actually, he did have a uh, 11th at, or 12th at World Championships this year, but in general, he's been like a 50 to 60 guy on the World Cup, um, and it's really been his ski speed that's been holding him back. He's actually uh, usually been a pretty good shooter a lot of top 10 shooting performances but uh, that is not good enough 20 for 20 for 20 is not good enough today for Andres Rastaguyas who has 19 for 20 and just superior ski speed he is your summer biathlon super sprint championship ch champion and congratulations to uh, Tomasz Makishka for coming in second. Hopefully this is a sign of good things to come for him. And there's Toshenko, Mr. Uh, been on the World Cup for many years, uh, not a new guy. Good race here for the Flowers, but uh, all of these guys. Hey, there's Cloud from Belgium. Really cool to see him in the mix. But uh, boom, there's your top six. There's your flower ceremony. Sorry, Oscar Brandt, you miss out. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, hit that subscribe button down below. Let me know in the comments whose names I mispronounced. And until next time, we'll see ya.